This aircraft isn't like any you have ever seen or known before. Prepare to be stunned. Be warned, you will be flabbergasted as this Russian Hell Reaper is capable of eliminating any enemy target without traces of impact. Stay tuned and keep your eyes peeled as we reveal the Russian top secret M25 Hell Reaper with a deadly boom. The birth of the Hell Reaper. Decades ago in 1996, the Soviet Union established and led a little bit of a destructive conflict in the Far East alongside its ally, China. The Soviet commander envisioned the idea of completely devastating but new kind of aircraft that could eliminate or annihilate its target without being equipped with any munition whatsoever, leaving no traces of impact on the specific kill zone it strikes. This amazing and yet unparalleled new aircraft was called the M25. The M25 was meant to be the first and only aircraft manufactured and developed to utilize the sonic boom to eliminate and disorientate enemy targets in an open war zone or battlefield. This was just the tip of the iceberg. Fuck me. Is this story of the top secret M25 Hell Reaper real or just another Russian myth? Make sure to stick around and keep watching as we unveil the mystery of the M25. The tale of the MiG-25 begins in southwestern Russia back in the era of 1968. A single MiG-21S Fishbird fighter jet echoes loudly in the chilly cold air above Farman near Lipek. Accelerating with more speed as the pilot increases the throttle, on reaching the border of the open field, he nudges the flight stick carefully forward and levels at an altitude of a few meters. Then an afterburner set in and the aircraft kicks off at supersonic speed. Enormous shockwaves trail through the ground, with chunks of dirt and dried grass being thrown high into the air, leaving behind paths like a hurricane. In June 1969, Vladimir Vasilevich Straminsky, the director of the Institute of Theoretical and Applied Mechanics of the Siberian branch of the Academy of Sciences of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. What a mouthful. He moves towards the entrance of the Ministry of Aviation in Moscow. In his hands, he carries the report of the early experiment and also the Ministry Council's decision on a new project proposal, the Special Purpose Sonic Wave Ground Attack Aircraft. The MiG-21 low-level supersonic flight experiments conducted in a remote proving ground were both a joint effort of the Institute and the Soviet Air Force, given permission by the Ministry. The reason for such an order was not completely known, which was a mystery in itself. Although the results were clear enough, Straminsky was to provide manpower, funding, and connections to go on and develop the Russian project codenamed Theme 25. Although putting that in mind, the maximum pressure of the MiG-21 sonic boom generated was 0.05 kilograms force per square centimeter, or 0.7 psi, enough to destroy glasses of various kinds, but not anything like disintegrating a bunch of houses. The Hell Reaper's capabilities. Nevertheless, the MiG-21 is an aerodynamic aircraft manufactured and developed to have minimal drag, meaning minimal sonic boom too. To have a more powerful sonic boom, you must possess a less dynamic aircraft. The shape of the aircraft is far more significant as it is possible to concentrate the power of the sonic boom by generating it with flat surfaces instead of the round cross sections of the fuselage of most regular aircraft. Based on Straminsky's research, most modifications of the MiG-21 airframe would shoot up the shockwave by five to six times, increasing it to five PSI, more than enough to destroy buildings and facilities. But to turn an aerodynamic aircraft supersonic, one needs some colossal thrust. Notwithstanding, the aircraft structure would have to withstand all the drag in line with the heat that accompanies it, to weaponize the destructive force that comes with it. But to completely weaponize the destructive force of the sonic boom, a special, extremely stable, and strong airframe is needed alongside an incredibly powerful engine. However, Straminsky wasn't given the power to head the task just by chance. He was awarded the title of the Director of the Institute of Theoretical and Applied Mechanics of the Serbian branch of the Academy of the Sciences of the Union of the Republic of the Soviet Socialists around 1960, after leaving the Mayaschev Design Bureau, which was one of the leading Soviet experiment development and design bureaus at the particular period in time. At the time, he designed and tested supersonic strategic bombers. History of the MiG-21 In 1960, the Bureau was dissolved by Nikita Khrushchev himself. 
among several men responsible for spreading this particular notion was Sherminsky himself. The notion was that, based on the development of the intercontinental ballistic missile, there was no future for strategic bombers. Due to this occurrence, its chief Vladimir Mikhailovich Miasevich was banished from being the head of the Central Aerohydrodynamic Institute, a prestigious and also famous academic organization, in which Myasishchev had the power to do anything apart from being the only thing he loved, designing and developing aircraft. Irrespective, he was used to difficulties. He had been working on experimental airplanes throughout his entire life, even throughout the entire years he's been spending in the Gulag, and minor things such as aircrafts being replaced by missiles couldn't hold him down. According to one of the employees of the Bureau, a foreseen conflict and confrontation was bound to happen between Myasashev and the man who tarnished his dreams, Stravinsky. However, it didn't come to pass as the two gentlemen met for the first time in 1960, they both removed their jackets, sat by a table, and began a civil conversation between two scientists who had a burning desire to create something no one else could. They both discussed and analyzed the idea of the sonic boom attack aircraft, how to implement it, the challenges it poses, and how to conduct the necessary research at the specified time. A detailed design proposal for the design was formulated and sent to the ministry. The two designers were equipped with full resources of the Straminsky Institute and the Air Force behind them. However, they worked separately. By the end of 1970, another test with the MiG-21 was carried out, with several dozens of designs put in place alongside work on models for wind tunnel testing, which was about to be carried out. The fuselage was initially supposed to be flat and rectangular, with a pointy nose cone and a cockpit in front. Beneath the aircraft, a ledge would be created, a protrusion that would be extended from the corners of the ledge, pinpointing the shockwave even more. There were also different kinds of proposed sizes for the plane, with weights ranging from 20 to 165 tons. This particular aircraft weighing 110 tons, with a fuselage length of about 39 meters, was designed and manufactured the most, and was also considered the most promising of all. Due to its amazing wings and diverse configurations, with the inclusion of a Delta and conventional one, were put in consideration with the inclusion of several engine placements within the fuselage region, under the wings, and between the tail fin sections. The engineers were seen to vividly focus mostly on that last one, but to execute it, it was important for them to have the engines themselves. Smirnov stated that by flying several dozen M25s in a formation, their shockwaves would combine, therefore increasing its destructive potency greatly which in turn would have the ability to destroy tanks and buildings. Insane, right? Uprising of the MiG-25 The M-25 came to life with the demise of the strategic nuclear bomber, with rockets able to soar through lower Earth's orbit and probably drop an unparalleled and highly destructive nuclear bomb. Russia, within that particular sphere of time, saw through the slow fading away and the end of an age of massive development of large aircraft bombers as it was time to explore space. The design and development of this incredible new bomber wouldn't need any equipped munitions, secret missiles, or any destructive payload. It only requires waves. Significantly, it would be impossible to repel shockwaves. Unlike missiles or munitions, which require cleaning of any form of radiation, this worked out with the old guard and the new guard on board. In conjunction with the support from the USSR military, they both had to work. They made a head start first with an existing supersonic aircraft, like the MiG-21. A large number of test flights were conducted at Lipstech Air Base, with the MiGs flying at around 25 meters and exceeding Mach 1. This test and experiments were utilized to visualize how fast an aircraft would need to move to go what difficulties might come up, and where corrections might be needed. They thought that a simple aircraft already in the USSR would be enough. However, the equipment with the MiG-21 sonic boom could only generate less than expected pressure, which was only strong enough to destroy glasses, but not concrete, metals, or human bodies. How? The aircraft would fly low to the ground, close to the speed of Mach 1, deploy its super shockwave, and cause havoc. What kind of disaster? A sonic boom shockwave that would be enough to destroy buildings, dismember tanks, and blow off heads. So what do you think about the Russians' incredible MiG-25? Do you think Russia will utilize the secret aircraft in future warfare? Do you think other major countries could have had an advanced version of the MiG-25? 
Drop your thoughts about all these in the comment section down below.